Dan Millman is a world champion athlete, university coach and professor, author of 13 books read all around the world. One is The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, also a feature film by Nick Nolte. Dan, thank you so much for joining me. A pleasure, Linda. Now, you won the 1964 world champion trampoline. Yes. Okay, 50 years later, are you still jumping? Still jumping. Really? Do you do somersaults and yeah, doubles? And... Yeah, in Hawaii a few weeks ago, a friend of mine has a trampoline school, and I went there and had some fun. Well, to be an athlete, even to write 13 books, takes discipline. So, the way of the peaceful warrior, if we want to begin that path, what would you say is the amount of discipline we would need on a scale of 1 to 10? Well, the main thing I want to emphasize is we're all on that path. I mean, every one of us is striving to live with a more peaceful heart, but there are times in our lives we need a warrior spirit because it takes courage to live in this world and to love in this world. So we're all peaceful warriors in training. It's not a special path separate from what other people are traveling. Daily life is our school, our relationships, our families. That's part of our training. But it does take discipline if you want to continue on that path. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. It does take discipline. You know, m many of us are trying to find ways to get motivated. If I only felt like doing it. But how many of us have taken the kids to school or uh, done homework or gone to work when we weren't really feeling like it? We all bring our will to bear every day. Rather than waiting to feel like doing things, to focus on what is it I need to do and then to do it. And that's really the key. It's not a matter of finding some mysterious thing called discipline. And in our daily lives, we experience it, all of us. Well, for you, this mysterious thing was when you drove into a gas station and at 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. a man approached you and you call him Socrates in your book. Yep. And he had made a profound impression on you. Mm -hmm. How did you know to believe him? Well, uh, trust has to be earned. And at first, I didn't. Um, I didn't know who this strange old guy was, and I did walk, I actually walked into that gas station about uh, 3 in the morning in Berkeley, California, uh, and, but there was something about him. There's a, a, I'm going to tell a quick story about a, a wanderer in the forest who met the Buddha many centuries ago. He didn't know who this man was, but he was fascinated by him, how he serenely walked through the woods, and the wanderer said to him, are you a king or a wizard? And Buddha said, no. He said, are you some kind of a warrior, a magician? And he said, no. And the man said, but what makes it you different from anyone I've ever met. And the Buddha smiled and said, oh, he said, I'm awake. And that's what struck me about this old guy in the gas station. There was something about him that I wanted, and I didn't know what it was. Maybe the twinkle in his eye, the way he was so relaxed, and seemed uh, uh, kind of free. And that's what uh, kept me around. And I learned a lot from him as related in way of the peaceful warrior. Maybe you were ready to receive that information because yes. some people will say, well, you know, when am I going to have that cathartic experience? Mm -hmm. Or when is my, you know, uh, Socrates going to show up? Mm -hmm. What do you say to people who think that? That's a frequent question I get. And what they have to understand is I wrote the book to share my teacher with other people and not to hoard the information. So, in a sense, all of us are teachers and students. Somebody is maybe a little bit ahead of us on the path, reaching back with a helping hand. So it's not a matter of finding an old man in a gas station or a mysterious teacher. Um, you know, there's a man who uh, wrote to me once and said, Dan, I, I'm interested in spiritual practice. He said, but I have a wife and three kids and a full-time job. And he came to understand that his wife, his children, and his full-time job were his spiritual practices. So our teachers are everywhere. And the point is, you know that that's old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears? What people don't get is it means the teacher appears everywhere because we're paying attention. 